Hi everybody, this is Shannon from No Shelf Control. Thanks for joining me on the channel tonight. I wanted to tell you about a new book that I have learned about and also the fact that I got to meet the author with my son here in Columbus, Ohio last week. So the book I'm referring to is You Could Make This Place Beautiful by Maggie Smith. You have heard me talk on the channel before about Maggie Smith. We talked about her book of poetry, Good Bones, and her inspirational quotes kind of book called Keep Moving. Really enjoyed both of those. Um, my son's English teacher actually teaches Maggie Smith at the high school um, for sophomore level English. And so he knew of her as well. And when we heard that she was both from Columbus, Ohio, I didn't know that initially, and would be here last week um, to give a presentation um, with the release of her new book, um, I was really excited and got us tickets to go. So Maggie Smith um, was interviewed um, at the Drexel Theater. So Bexley, Ohio has both an independent bookstore, Gramercy Books, which we've talked about before and who sponsored this event, um, and an independent uh, theater, like film house, called the Drexel. And so the event was at the Drexel. They had a whole theater uh, sold out of people there to see Maggie Smith uh, launch her new book and have a conversation with Saeed Jones. Um, if you are not familiar with Saeed Jones, he is also a poet and memoirist. He wrote um, How We Fight for Our Lives and Prelude to Bruise. Now, I have not checked out either one of those, but after listening to him talk with Maggie uh, on Tuesday night, I can't wait to pick up those books as well. So that is Saeed Jones. He has apparently moved to Columbus, Ohio. He and Maggie talked a fair bit about how their friends from big cities come to Columbus, Ohio and, and go away and, uh, you know, think that they're never coming back. And Saeed and Maggie just look at them and think, oh, you'll be back. And talking about what a progressive and sort of um, forward thinking city Columbus actually is, despite the fact that we're smack dab in the middle of the Midwest. Now, we are surrounded on all sides by not progressive communities, <laughs> but Columbus itself is very progressive and, uh, you know, pretty metropolitan. So um, talked a little bit about that. So I want to check out Saeed Jones' book, but I want to talk to you today about You Could Make This Place Beautiful. It was a pleasure to meet Maggie Smith. She is very down to earth. Um, she has children. She's a mom. She's divorced. Um, and that is primarily what her memoir covers is sort of the process of dealing with, you know, growing up, getting married, having kids, and then going through a separation and divorce um, that's really painful and pretty tough. Um, so that's what she's delving into here. The interesting part, and one of the things she talked about, was her writing process. She's a poet. This is a memoir. Um, and so she talked about the fact that she couldn't sit down and write a book. That's just not what she does. And so this book is a collection of vignettes about her life um, that read a lot like poems, many of them. There's a lot of white space. It's a very quick read. It is 308, 309 pages, um, but it goes really fast just because of how it's laid out. There's a lot of time that you'll want to take to think, though. It's one of those books that you sort of dip in and out of. Um, you read a little bit and then spend a little time with it, um, just sort of letting it wash over you and figuring out, you know, what it means and what it might mean to you. I do want to tell you the details of the book um, and tell you a little bit about the blurbs and the synopsis, like I always do. So this is You Could Make This Place Beautiful. It's published by Atria One Signal Publishers and it is 320 pages. I thought it was 309, I was a little uh, off there. And the blurb on the back of the book, there are several of them. It says, a sparkling, brilliant memoir in vignettes that only Maggie Smith could write. Smith's powerful mastery of language and amazing ability to portray life in all its rich messiness are on full display in this bold, brutally candid, and yes, beautiful book. And that is from Isaac Fix. Isaac Fitzgerald, New York Times bestselling author of Dirtbag, Massachusetts. Uh, the next blurb says, reading this book, I laughed and gasped and ugly cried and somehow began to process 10 years of my own pent up frozen grief. You could make this place beautiful is nothing less than a cathartic miracle. And that is from Alyssa Nutting, author of Made for Love. 
There's also this one. It says, in this lightning bolt of a debut memoir, Maggie Smith gives us the truth of healing in form as much as story. You could make this place beautiful, gave me back a part of myself I thought was gone for good. The knowledge that beauty isn't something out there to find, it's in us. And that's from Megan Steelstra, author of The Wrong Way to Save Your Life. And then the last one is, the way Maggie Smith brings poetry to her prose, her willingness to show up on the page with vulnerability, grace, and joy, and her clarity of heart amid heartbreak, make this book a gorgeous must read. And that is from Elizabeth Crane, author of This Story Will Change. So let's read the synopsis. It says, in her memoir, You Could Make This Place Beautiful, poet Maggie Smith explores the disintegration of her marriage and her renewed commitment to herself in lyrical vignettes that shine hard and clear as jewels. The book begins with one woman's personal, particular heartbreak, but its circles widen into a reckoning with contemporary womanhood, traditional gender roles, and the power dynamics that persist even in many progressive homes. With the spirit of self-inquiry and empathy she's known for, Smith interweaves snapshots of a life with meditations on secrets, anger, forgiveness, and narrative itself. The power of these pieces is cumulative. Page after page, they build into a larger interrogation of family, work, and patriarchy. You could make this place beautiful, like the work of Deborah Levy, R Rachel Cusk, and Gina Frangello, is an unflinching look at what it means to live and write our own lives. It is a story about a mother's fierce and constant love for her children and a woman's love and regard for herself. Above all, this memoir is an argument for possibility. With a poet's attention to language and an innovative approach to the genre, Smith reveals how in the aftermath of loss, we can discover our own power and make something new, something beautiful. So I really loved this. Um, if you're not familiar with Maggie Smith's work, there is a poem in Good Bones that talks about, and I will completely mess this up, but roughly the intent of the poem is to say that um, when a real estate agent shows you a house that is kind of a dump, um, they're, they're always likely to say, you could make this place beautiful. And so that's where the line um, for this book, for the title of this book actually comes from. A couple other things that Maggie Smith talked about that were really interesting to me. She talked a lot about boundaries. Um, she talked about the fact that she shared as much as she wanted to about her divorce in this book and has learned both on tour and, you know, once the book has been published, um, you know, how far she's willing to go with sharing more information than that um, and has learned, you know, to be able to say, no, I'm not taking those questions or, you know, I don't have anything further I want to share. Um, and I thought that was really admirable. You know, I, I know it must be difficult in circumstances like that to put up a boundary and say, you know, this is what I shared about it. This is what I plan to share about it. And, you know, I'm not taking questions deeper into this topic. Um, she did also talk about, um, there's a scene in the book where her husband's attorney refers to her writing as work with air quotes. And so there were a lot of jokes between her and Saeed about her work uh, during the interview that night. Um, and you, you know, you can see a little bit how she talks about the patriarchy and how, um, you know, things even in progressive towns and progressive families um, can be, you know, patriarchal and, and a little difficult, um, you know, so there are pieces of this book that are m about more, as the synopsis and some of the, the uh, blurbs say, about more than just Maggie Smith's life. It's about life in general. We actually got our books signed. Um, I got my book signed and Maggie was super generous and very kind when we were, um, when we got the chance to meet her. She also signed a book for my son's English teacher that he got to give to him um, since he teaches Maggie Smith in the classroom, which I thought was really cool. Um, and then <clears throat> she talked a lot about Columbus, Ohio. You know, what a small town Bexley, Ohio is. That's where the Gramercy uh, Bookstore and the Drexel Theater are. And she's lived there most of her life and how she would walk up and down the streets with her son, Rhett, strapped to her chest in a sling. And, the you know, she could always count on the local police officer to say, 
slow it down there, mama. You know, <laughs> so um, we just got really good stories from her and a real nice flavor for what her life and, and for what she is like. Maggie also talked a lot about just being herself, about how she's always been something of an original, someone who is slightly outside the fray. Um, her parents were in the audience. Um, her English teacher from high school was in the audience. And she talked about how she's always sort of been recognized as one of those people. Um, and, you know, has a card from her English teacher in high school that talks about, you know, how she's one of a kind. Um, and uh, she's kept it on her desk all these years. So it was really cool to get insight into who Maggie Smith really is, both as an author and a person. So it was a wonderful experience. I think this is a wonderful book. I was really excited to see that she was writing something about her experience. All of her poems, of course, are in some way about her experience. But this memoir is directly about, um, you know, what has happened to her as an adult um, and in her marriage in particular. So I highly suggest you check this out uh, when you get a chance. It is You Could Make This Place Beautiful by Maggie Smith. I hope that you have enjoyed this book review. Um, I have several more short one book reviews uh, that I want to bring to you, uh, both backlist and new titles. Um, I have all of the new releases every week that uh, I'm excited about that I'll be bringing to you. And I have a few surprises up my sleeve. So I hope you'll come back and continue to watch the channel. If you liked this particular video, please click like and subscribe. It helps me to understand what it is you enjoy as an audience so that I can continue to do more of that. I do have a wish list at the bottom of each one of my videos. Uh, so if you would like to gift me with a book from bookshop.org, um, they will send it directly to me. I will read it, give it a review on the channel and make sure that you get a shout out. So uh, I hope you will come back later this week for more bookish talk and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.